All right, so um, <clears throat> our dear students, uh, you're welcome for this lecture. And uh, last time we talked about uh, quite a number of things as far as electrolytes are concerned. Uh, we talked about the different imbalances that happen uh, when you have um, you know, deficiencies or too much of electrolytes. Uh, remember, we talked about um, potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium as uh, the, the, the cations. And then as far as the anions are concerned, we talked about chloride, uh, phosphate, you know, among others. And we said uh, that, that these basically can create an imbalance, yeah? And uh, the imbalance is either a hyper or a hypo. And uh, we also talked about uh, uh, fluids, yeah? And we said that uh, water, comprises the biggest percentage. And we, we saw how water is taken in the body and how it is brought out of the body, yeah? So um, that marked the end of uh, what we were supposed to cover as far as electrolytes were concerned, yeah? Now, to continue uh, with the course units, we want to cover um, the concepts of acid-base balance uh, in the body. In other words, we want to know how, uh, how is uh, acid and base balanced in the body and what are the key players as far as acid-base balance is concerned, yeah? So by the end of this lecture, you should be able to, to define what an acid is, what a base is, what, what are the normal balances of acids and bases in the body, and then you will be able to, 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 to also define the imbalances that we are going to come across and how you actually interpret these imbalances, yeah? Right, so what is, what is an acid, yeah? What is an acid? Um, an acid, if, uh, if you, you could reflect, is basically a substance that is rich in hydrogen ions, yeah? And on the other hand, a base is a substance or a solution that is rich in hydroxyl ions. Now, if you still remember your O and A level chemistry, that is how basically you define, in simple terms, that is how you define an acid or a base. Now, how do we measure a base and how do we measure an, an acid? Now, we measure that using what we refer to as the pH, yeah? The pH, yeah? So, we, we do that using the pH, yeah? Or what we refer to as the power, power of, of hydrogen, yeah? The power of hydrogen. Yeah, the power of hydrogen is what basically measures the pH, yeah? Now, um, Normally, the pH uh, ranges from 1 to 14, yeah? So the range is, is usually from 1 to 14, yeah? So the range is from 1 to 14, yeah? So in other words, uh, you can get, a, 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 when you have a particular solution, you can get a pH that ranges from 1 to 14, yeah? And uh, it should be mentioned that acids tend towards the, the smaller numbers, yeah? While bases tend towards the, the bigger or higher numbers, yeah? So it is also very important for you to know that uh, our plasma or our blood, yeah? Our blood basically has a normal, a normal pH of blood which ranges from 7.35 to 7.35. We are saying 7.35 to 7.45. Now, those are the normal pH. Yeah, that is the normal range of a pH in our, you know, of our blood. Yeah. And uh, if it goes beyond that, yeah, then, uh, you know, it is tending to be basic. If it goes lower than that, then it, tend is, it is tending to be acidic. Now, the body has to make this, you know, the body has to ensure that this 
this is the pH, yeah, that your body has, yeah? And so several mechanisms take place or several organs, yeah, uh, you know, play part to make sure that you have a balance, yeah? To make sure that you have this balance of uh, pH in the body. And uh, the balancing systems that we have are basically the respiratory system and then the renal system. As we are going to say, as we're going to, to see, the renal system is basically slow, but usually sure. In other words, it, it does compensation. It is very effective, yeah? As far as compensation is concerned. However, it is quite slow. On the other hand, the respiratory system is quite fast, yeah? It is quite fast as far as, uh, you know, uh, balancing is, uh, is actually concerned. Now, um, there are two uh, imbalances, yeah, that you should know, yeah? There are two imbalances that you should know, and these are, uh, we have what we call an acidosis, yeah? We have what we call an acidosis. And we also have what we call an alkalosis. Now these two imbalances are, are you know, are the acid-based imbalances that we shall come across, yeah? Uh, it is either acidosis or alkalosis. And uh, we are going to see what, what, what it means to have an acidosis or what it means to have um, an alkalosis, yeah? So respiratory imbalances can also be acidosis or alkalosis. And in this case, they are referred to as respiratory alkalosis and respiratory acidosis, yeah? Now, we can also have metabolic imbalances, yeah? And these are basically triggered by what we call metabolic disorders, yeah? Such as the disorders of the renal system or the GIT, yeah? And for that case, they are called metabolic, yeah? For that case, we said they are called metabolic. And so it can be a metabolic acidosis or it can be a metabolic alkalosis, as we are going to see, yeah? Now, those are the two imbalances that we usually have in the body, yeah? So we are going to see how they come about and probably how they can be managed. Now, I want to draw your attention uh, to, to, to what we call the partial pressure of oxygen, yeah? Because uh, for you to be able to, to know the concept and how to interpret, yeah? You need to know what we call the partial pressure of oxygen, also called PaO2, yeah? Now, the partial pressure of oxygen, this is the amount of oxygen that is dissolved in blood plasma, yeah? So the amount of oxygen that is developed, dissolved in blood plasma is what we refer to as the partial pressure of oxygen, yeah? Now, um, measurement of pulling oxygen into, you know, into, into uh, the blood from the atmosphere. And then the normal values, you should know, the normal values of partial pressures of oxygen, uh, the normal values are basically um, 80, yeah? the normal values are basically 80 to 100. Now you need to know that, yeah? You need to know that the normal values are 80 to 100 millimeters of mercury, yeah? Millimeters of mercury, yeah? So you need to know that because uh, we are going to find it quite often as we are doing our interpretation of, uh, you know, of these things, yeah? So, um. Then the other thing that you should know is uh, the saturation of oxygen. Now these two are different, yeah? Uh, with the partial pressure of oxygen, remember we said it is the amount of oxygen that is dissolved, yeah? On the other hand, saturation of oxygen is basically the percentage, yeah? 
of hemoglobin that is fully combined with oxygen. Remember, the transporting agent in blood that is, you know, that transports oxygen is called, uh, you know, uh, hemoglobin, yeah? And so the normal values of, of, uh, partial, of uh, saturation of, uh, of hemoglobin are 95 to 100, as you can see there, yeah? So please put that uh, into, uh, you know, into your mind, so that because uh, we're going to be able to use it as we move on. Now, what is the relationship between partial pressure of oxygen and saturation, yeah? Now we are saying that uh, when the partial pressure of oxygen is more than 90 millimeters of mercury, then the saturation is usually um, more than 95. That is a rule, yeah? And uh, there's what we call the, 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 the 30, 60, 90 rule, where you can see when the partial pressure of oxygen is, uh, is uh, 30 milli, milli, uh, milli, 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 millimeters of mercury, then the saturation is 60, yeah? If it, is, uh, if it is 60 millimeters of mercury, then the, um, then the, 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 the partial, uh, rather the saturation is uh, 90%. Now that is the relationship between uh, uh, partial pressure of oxygen and uh, the saturation of oxygen. Now, remember we said pH is the power of hydrogen. And uh, so the normal pH we, we said is, uh, is uh, 7.35 to 7.45, yeah? And so the lower limit, in other words, uh, someone cannot survive, yeah? If their, partial, if their pH goes below 6.8, yeah? Someone cannot survive if their pH goes below 6.8. And then someone will not survive if their pH goes beyond, you know, beyond eight. Yeah. So those are the upper and lower limits of, uh, of uh, you know, of uh, pH. Yeah. So that basically means that your body has to do mechanisms, has to find out mechanisms on how to balance, yeah, to balance so that you have, or so that your, your, your pH yeah, is within these limits, yeah? It has, your body has to do uh, mechanisms so that to make sure that your pH is within, you know, those limits, yeah? Within those limits, yeah? So basically that is very, very um, important. And we're going to see the key players in this. The other thing that I want you to, 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 to concentrate on or to know is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, yeah? Remember, as we breathe in, yeah? We breathe in uh, oxygen and then we breathe out uh, carbon dioxide, yeah? So it is very important for you to know the partial pressures of carbon dioxide, yeah? Because we shall use these, these things we have been talking about are the ones we shall use as far as interpretation of acid-base imbalances is basically concerned, yeah? Now, Partial pressure of carbon dioxide uh, is basically the amount of carbon dioxide that is dissolved, yeah, in, in blood, yeah? And, uh, and the respiratory component is basically, is the one that, that, uh, that usually does the compensation, yeah? In case we have a very high, um, in case we have uh, a lot of uh, carbon dioxide in the body, yeah? So what actually happens is that, um, um, the carbon dioxide that we have in the body, yeah, combines with, yeah, it combines with water, yeah, it combines with water to form um, carbonic acid, yeah, to form carbonic, to form carbonic acid, yeah. Now, uh, when it forms carbonic acid, yeah, Basically, um, so when, when we want, uh, when we want uh, to, 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 to when, when, when we have a lot of, as I said, when we have a lot of um, that, yeah, then it combines with that to form carbonic acid, yeah? So basically, uh, and, and uh, the, the enzyme that, that does that is what we call carbonic um, anhydrase, yeah? So, um, 
what actually happens is that uh, this this is a, a weak acid yeah so all the time the the the, the, the all the time yeah the the, the 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 reaction is not basically complete yeah in other words uh, it's a, it's a reversible kind of uh, kind of reaction yeah so if we have too much if we have too much here yeah then it combines with water to form carbonic acid yeah and then um this carbonic acid yeah what actually happens is that it also breaks yeah it also breaks down into bicarbonate and uh, you know and then the hydrogen ions yeah it also breaks down into bicarbonate and the hydrogen ions. Yeah. Now, um, so if we have, uh, if we again, if uh, so, so in other words, it's, it's kind of like a, a cycle. If we have too much, uh, if you have, uh, if we have too much hydrogen ions, they combine with that to form that, which which in turn forms that, and then this one is leaves out. In other words, it goes out. Or we, we breathe it out. Yeah. We breathe it out. So. In other words, we are saying that um, uh, when we have too much of that, yeah, it combines with water to form that, yeah, which which uh, which which forms uh, which can also combine uh, which which can also dissociate to form this, yeah, and then these ones can be, can be got rid of, yeah, in the body, yeah, and and if we have too much acid, yeah, or if we have too much that, yeah. It dissociates. If you have too much acid in the body, it adds. It, it, it adds to the bicarbonate, forming that which forms, uh, which also in turn makes this. Because remember, the reaction is is not complete. Yeah. So when it, it ends up making carbon dioxide, which is breathed out, yeah, of uh, of the body system. So that is basically how the body compensates. When we have, uh, you know, uh, when we have either too much acid, or when we have too much uh, carbon dioxide uh, in the in the body. Now, the normal values, the normal values of um, of the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, yeah, are basically 35 to 45 millimeters of millimeters of mercury. Yeah, those are the normal values of uh, of uh, of the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. Now, the other one that you should also know is uh, bicarbonate, yeah, bicarbonate, uh, which is which is uh, which is usually formed, yeah. But it is also uh, it it also exists, yeah, in uh, in blood, yeah. So bicarbonate ion is basically a metabolic component component of uh, of the compensatory system. In other words. Uh, the metabolic the metabolism as a result of the renal oil the gi yeah it uh, they are they are products which are formed and one of them is uh, the bicarbonate ion yeah the bicarbonate ion here basically is a, is a component is mostly a component of uh, the comp the metabolic compensatory mechanism yeah and uh, the normal values the normal values are 22 to 28 you know 22 to 28 yeah those are the normal values of uh, of uh, of um, bicarbonate yeah and usually the ratio of bicarbonate to carbon dioxide is uh, 20 to 1 in other words we have more bicarbonate compared to the carbon dioxide yeah now let's look at what we refer to as the buffer system yeah uh, buffer system. These are basically systems that are that are within or freely existing uh, in our body, yeah. And they are basically they want to uh, you know to to kind of like um, compensate, yeah, for for any either for any imbalance, whether an acidosis or uh, an alkalosis, yeah. Now the normal pH is a result of uh, you know bicarbonate to carbon dioxide ratio, yeah. And so when uh, when when the bicarbonate or carbon dioxide changes so that the ratio is not maintained, then we have what we call an acid base imbalance. Yeah, and uh, a ratio of less than twenty to one basically indicates an acidosis, and one that is more than that represents uh, an alkalosis. Now, 
Um, how does how does uh, the how do the kidneys basically do compensation? Yeah. Uh, within the kidneys, we have uh, things like uh, we shall look at um, we shall of course look at the role of the kidneys as far as electrolytes and uh, acid-base balance is concerned. We shall look at it in more detail. Yeah. But um, when the pH is uh, when the pH is is less than normal. Yeah. In other words, uh, when the pH is, is acidic, yeah, then uh, we have more excretion and at the at the in the kidneys at the at the at the at the nephrons, yeah. We have more excretion of sort of uh, rather of hydrogen ions, yeah. And uh, uh, when we when we have uh, a pH when when the pH is greater than normal, in other words, is basic or alkalotic. Then hydrogen ions are usually, conf, uh, you know, they are they are conserved, yeah. And uh, and on the other hand, the, the, the basic forming or the high uh, of the hydrogen carbonate ions are excreted, yeah. And uh, we are saying that Reno. Now we shall look at this in detail when we say when we look at the role of the kidneys as far as uh, you know acid base balance and electrolyte balance is concerned. We shall look at this in detail. And then you will understand how these two things happen. Now, uh, we know that, as, as mentioned earlier, renal compensation takes hours, yeah, and, and even days, yeah. So renal compensation does not happen in, in, in minutes, yeah, but it takes hours and days, yeah. And it is also very important, sodium chloride, potassium bicarbonates, these ones uh, may be stimulated by acid-base imbalances, to move in and out of, uh, you know, intracellular and extracellular compartments, yeah? We shall see in detail what we mean by this. But uh, in, 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 in basically they are saying that uh, as the kidney does its compensation, yeah, uh, we, we can also have, you know, uh, ions moving, yeah, in, in different directions, as, uh, as we mentioned earlier. Now, um, the respiratory compensatory mechanism, uh, basically, uh, uh, and when we talk about respiratory compensation, it, it has to do with breathing, yeah? So in other words, if you have too much carbon dioxide in, in the body, you, you breathe too much to pass it out, yeah? And if you have uh, less, yeah, less carbon dioxide in the body, then you breathe, uh, you know, little, you breathe less, yeah? That is what we are saying. But, um, all in all, the, the, the center, the respiratory center that is responsible for, you know, compensation is located within the medulla of Langata, yeah? Within the medulla of Langata. If, uh, if, if, you, if you still remember your, um, if you remember your, your, um, your central nervous system, yeah? So basically, um, the, med the respiratory center within the medulla blangata is sensitive to concentrations or to too much concentrations of uh, carbon dioxide, yeah, and uh, and hydrogen ion in you know in body fluids, yeah, and the uh, respiratory comp compensation basically occurs in seconds. In other words, if uh, if within the medulla it senses that you know there is too much carbon dioxide and hydrogen ions in the body, what actually happens is that. Uh, you know, the, 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 the body is stimulated to breathe very fast, yeah? So that's to, to get rid of the excess carbon dioxide in our body, yeah? And this one takes seconds to minutes, yeah? And uh, we're saying that the low pH stimulates the medulla blangata to increase the rate and depth of respirations so that we blow off, yeah? In other words, we blow off the, uh, you know, the, the too much carbon dioxide within our body, yeah? And then a high pH basically inhibits the respiratory medulla, causing, uh, you know, causing uh, carbon dioxide to be retained. Remember, a high pH basically means that we have less of, uh, of hydrogen ions, yeah, because it is alkalosis. Yeah, so it inhibits the, 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 the center, yeah, it inhibits. Remember, if, uh, this, if I might just draw a, a small demonstration, uh, this is, if this is your brain, yeah, this is your brain, yeah? Um, this is your brain. This is your... So this, this, uh, this basically, this is your pawns, yeah? 
and then this is your this is your medulla yeah and then this is your spinal cord yeah so and then this is your this is your cerebellum yeah now usually this is the cerebral cortex yeah this is your cerebellum this is these are the pons yeah and then this is the medulla oblongata yeah? so the rest of the center and then this is the spinal cord yeah this is the spinal cord yeah so now the rest of the center is basically uh, this part yeah so there is a center there which is responsible for um you know respiration within uh within the body yeah so uh, it is very important for you to know that uh, when the when the carbon dioxide is high then the center is activated to cause too much you know breathing yeah and when the carbon dioxide is low or when the ph is uh, is high in other words you have uh, very low concentrations of uh, acid then the, the the center is 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 basically inhibited yeah and therefore uh, there is retention of uh, carbon dioxide within the body now um we we talked about the values of carbon of uh, of bicarbonate and we said it is 22 to, to 28 milli equivalents per liter those are the normal values yeah you need to know you need to know the normal values yeah because it will base on we shall base on that to do interpretation yeah of an acid base imbalance is it alkalosis or is or it is acidosis yeah right now um what, what is uh, what is the role what, what is the importance of uh, compensation is that uh, when when we have compensation then it maintains uh, the homeostasis yeah in other words it maintains an equilibrium or a balance yeah and we said that uh, respiratory and metabolic system work to you know to balance each other yeah so if the problem is within the the respiratory system yeah then the metabolic yeah uh compensates if the problem is within the metabolic then it is the respiratory which compensates yeah i want you to note that yeah if the problem is metabolic then the compensation will come from the respiratory if the problem is is uh, respiratory then the compensation will come from the metabolic yeah and uh, we also have uh, uh, partial or complete compensation but we, we never have uh, overcompensation. Yeah? We never have uh, the word overcompensation. Yeah? Now, the imbalances, as we said, are alkalosis or acidosis. Yeah? And, uh, and so the imbalances that are within the respiratory system are respiratory acidosis and respiratory alkalosis. Yeah? And then the imbalances that are within the metabolic system a metabolic alkalosis and metabolic acidosis. We are going to see what or how we, we, we come to these, yeah? Now, it is very important, I'll spend some time here, because it is very important to, for you to know these normal values, yeah? Because it is upon these that you'll be able to, 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 to you know, to, to interpret, yeah? It is upon these values that you'll be able to interpret whether the imbalance is metabolic or alkalolic, or, or, or whether the imbalance is metabolic or respiratory, and or whether the imbalance is alkalosis or um, acidosis. So please make make sure that uh, those those normal values yeah are on your fingertips. We said pH is uh, seven point three five to seven point four five, and uh, the partial pressure of uh, carbon dioxide is uh, thirty five to to 45 millimeters of mercury. Uh, the, the normal values of, uh, of bicarbonate are 28 to, to 20, uh, rather 22 to 28 uh, milli equivalents per liter. And then the partial pressure of uh, oxygen is basically 80 to 100. And then the saturation of oxygen is 95 to 100. Please make sure that you, on your fingertips, you, you have uh, you have those normal values because we are going to use those to do the interpretation. Yeah. Now, what do we mean by uh, arterial blood gases, or what is an arterial blood gas? Yeah. 
So arterial arterial blood gases. Arterial blood gases, also known as ABGs, yeah? So um, how do we do them, by the way? Um, ABGs, basically, uh, what, we, what we do is that uh, we, we get blood from, uh, from the artery, yeah? That is why it is called arterial, yeah? We get blood from the artery, yeah? And then, uh, you know, it is put in a machine, yeah, to do uh, the interpretation, yeah? Rather to get the, the values, yeah? But the interpretation is done by you, uh, the, the, the individual or the health worker, yeah? Now, uh, the most common site where they get blood from is, is the radio, you know, the radio, the radio, the radio artery, yeah? As you can see, uh, the radio artery, yeah? Please touch yourself. At that point, then you'll, you'll feel a, a pulsation, yeah? So that is what we refer to as the radio artery. And that is where they get this blood. That is the most common place where they get blood uh, for, for doing uh, arterial blood gases, yeah? And then after getting that blood, of course, uh, it is taken in a machine, which gets us the figures or the values that we use to interpret, yeah? We use these figures to, uh, to interpret, yeah? Now, ABGs measure blood acid, you know, they, be, they basically measure blood acid balance. Is there an imbalance or, or, or things are basically normal, yeah? So um, carbon dioxide is the respiratory, not this, please. Carbon dioxide is the respiratory component in the acid-base balance, yeah? And uh, bicarbonate is the renal component, yeah, in the acid base balance, yeah. And uh, so compensation in pH imbalance occurs when the respiratory or metabolic system reacts to basically change the pH towards the normal, yeah. That is what we refer to as compensation, yeah. Now, uh, remember, we are looking at uh, interpretation, yeah? We, we want to, to know how do we interpret acid-base balances, yeah? Or how do we interpret ABGs, yeah? Or arterial blood gases, how do we interpret them, yeah? That is what we, we want to launch now into, yeah? So we are saying that every ABG has three names, yeah? Every ABG has three names, yeah? Three names, one. First is that you have to identify, please listen attentively, you have to identify the imbalance, yeah? Whether it is acidosis or alkalosis, yeah? And that is the last name. Just like uh, you have three names, some of you, yeah? So even ABGs have three names, yeah? So one or the first one is uh, the, you identify the imbalance, yeah? Which is either alkalosis or acidosis. And that is the first, rather that is the last name. Now, second, you find the cause of the imbalance, yeah? Is it respiratory or is it metabolic, yeah? That is what we refer to as the middle name middle name of this ABG, yeah? And then third, you determine if the opposite system, if the opposite system is trying to correct the imbalance, yeah? In other words, whether it is compensating or not, yeah? Or partial, yeah? So um, you basically, this is the first name, yeah? Compensated, yeah? or non-compensated or uncompensated, yeah? And then for the determine if the attempt has been complete or, you know, or partial, and that is what we refer to as the title, yeah? Like, for example, your name might be Mr. Kamolegea Victor Martin, yeah? So something like that, Mr. Kamolegea Victor Martin, yeah? So basically, even ABGs have something like that. So we are going to go through it. Uh, you know, uh, we are going to go through it so that, uh, so that you really understand 
what how we interpret these yeah and uh, so you should be able to understand how we do interpret these now um a quick and easy analysis of this is is, is basically this one is a uh, First, determine if the pH is more acidic or basic, yeah? Again, I repeat, determine if the pH is more acidic or basic, yeah? And when we are interpreting, when we are interpreting whether it is acidic or basic, we use, you know, we use um, 7.4 as our, as our, you know, 7.4 is what we use as our, mark yeah 7.4 yeah is what we use as our our mark yeah now 7.4 7.4 is what we use as our mark yeah now if you have a ph which is more which is up here if you have a ph which is the here yeah no 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 let's say if you have a pH, yeah, if you have a pH which is more, more than this, yeah, if you have a pH which is more than that, yeah, then it is said to be basic or al alkalosis, yeah, basic or alkalosis. Then if you have a pH, All right. So when uh, when you have uh, when you have it more than seven point four, then it is said to be basic or alkalosis, yeah. And uh, if you have it uh, less than that, yeah. If you have it less than seven point four, then it's said to be uh, acidosis, yeah. So please make sure that we always use this figure, yeah. This figure is what is what we, we call as our mark, yeah, of interpretation, yeah. We always base on seven point four, yeah. We always base on seven point four as our mark of interpretation. So um, after after determining that, yeah, after determining that, of course, uh, if, if for example it is seven point for if it is seven point three five, yeah. Then it where does it fall? Yeah, it falls on this other side. Then it is acidosis. Yeah, if it is seven point eight, you know, then it falls on this other side. Then it is alkalosis. Yeah, so very very important on that. Now, second, you determine if the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is normal. Yeah. You determine if the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is normal, yeah? Uh, and the normal is, we say the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, the normal is 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury, yeah? So the, 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 the normal partial pressure of carbon dioxide is uh, 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury. Now you determine whether it is normal, yeah? If it's not normal, yeah, if it's not normal and it is less than 35, yeah, then it is said to be alkalosis, yeah? Alkalosis. And again, if it's not normal and more than 45, then it is said to be acidosis. Acidosis. Yeah? Yes. So basically that is what we are saying. As you can see, uh, if, it is, uh, if it is less than 35, then it is alkalosis. If it is more than 45, then it is acidosis. Yeah? All right. Now the other third thing is you, you look at the bicarbonate. Yeah? You look at the bicarbonate or the 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 yeah the bicarbonate, which is basically uh, the one responsible for the metabolic system. Yeah, 
Now, um, the normal value, yeah, again, we said the normal value is 22 to 28, yeah? The normal value is 22 to 28. So 22 to 28 mini equivalents per deciliter or per liter. It's the same thing. Per deciliter or per liter is basically the same thing, yeah? Now, if it is less than this, yeah? If it is less than this, then it is said to be acidosis, yeah? Acidosis. And if it is more than this, then it's said to be alka, alkalosis, yeah? So, so you, you, you look at the bicarbonate as well, yeah? And, uh, and so, if, if the figure is less than that, then it, we have acidosis. Or if the figure is more than that, then we have alkalosis. So fourth, uh, you compare all the labels, yeah? You compare all the labels. One of the labels will match with the pH, yeah? In other words, one of, uh, one of, one of either the, 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 the bicarbonate or the, the partial pressure of, 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 carbon, of uh, carbon dioxide will match with the pH, yeah? Now, the one that basically matches the pH is the middle name, yeah? The one that matches yeah, the pH is usually the middle name, yeah? So if respiratory, if respiratory carbon dioxide matches, then that is the middle name. Or if, if uh, the metabolic, uh, if the metabolic matches, then that is the middle name. We are going to, we are going to see this. Please uh, go along. Yeah, go along with me. You will understand what we mean. So that is what we do fourth. Yeah. So they gave us an example there. Yeah. They gave us an example there. Yeah. We are saying, uh, please look critically. Yeah. They are giving us an example there, and they are saying that. The pH, the pH is seven point. Remember, we said uh, how do we get these values? Uh, these values they drop blood, yeah. They drop blood from the artery, yeah. And the and the commonest artery that they use is the uh, radio artery, yeah. Now they take that blood to a machine, yeah. What we call the ABG machine, yeah. The ABG machine, ABG machine. Now that ABG machine, basically it, it, it gets the values. It's the one that basically analyzes and, and gets the values, yeah? But now it is upon you to do the interpretation, yeah? It is upon the health worker to do the interpretation, yeah? So we are saying, these are the figures that the ABG machine has given us. Yeah? The ABG machine has given us a figure of pH, which is 7.23. Yeah? So in other words, the pH that we have is 7.23. Yeah? And then the bicarbonate that it has given us is 17. Yeah? Mini equivalence per liter, yeah? So in other words, the bicarbonate is, is 17, yeah? Mini equivalence per, and then the partial pressure, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide it has given us is 23, you know, millimeters of mercury, mini equivalence, a liter, yeah, and then and then and then that is the pH. Now, if we go through step by step, what did we say? The, the first step that you do is one is you look at the pH, yeah. You look at the pH and then decide, yeah, is it acidosis or alkalosis? Yeah. Remember, we said we look at our, our value that we look at yeah, is not the range, yeah? Is not the range, yeah? 
But our value that we look at when we are interpreting these figures is 7 point what? 7 point 4. Yeah, 7 point 4. That is the value we, we look at. Yeah, now, how is 7.4 compared to this? Yeah, so that basically means this figure is less, yeah, than 7.4. In other words, it falls this side, yeah? And those figures which fall this side, we said they are basically acidosis, yeah? So in other words, yeah, the name, the last name that we have for this figure here is basically acidosis, yeah? Acido, acidosis, yeah? So in other words, it is acidosis. Now, the other thing that you have to look at is, uh, is um, the, the, the carbon dioxide partial pressure. And so when we look at the carbon dioxide partial pressure, this is what we have, yeah? But we said, remember, we said the normal range is what? The normal range is, 35 to 45, yeah? The normal range is 35 to 45. So, but we have the FBG machine has given us 23. So this basically means this, this, this figure here falls this side of the, of the, um, of, of this range, yeah? So in other words, this side, this, this part is, is basically giving us, uh, um, it is giving us uh, um, alkalosis, yeah, because it, it falls on this side, yeah, it falls on this side, yeah. So it, for it, it is giving us alkalosis, yeah. So this figure here is basically giving us alkalosis, yeah. Now, after that, you look at the bicarbonate, yeah. Look at the bicarbonate, please, now. The bicarbonate that we have is, is what the ABG machine has given us. It has given us 17, yeah? But remember the normal range. What did we say the normal range of bicarbonate is? Good. It is 22 to 28, yeah? 22 to 28 uh, milliequivalents per liter. Now, this 17, yeah? Where does it fall? Does it fall on, on this side or the other side? Of course, it falls on this side, yeah? So that basically means this 17, for it, it is giving us acidosis, yeah? So it is giving us acidosis. So for it, it is giving us acidosis. Now, you look after that you look at at this and that and determine which one is in the direction of the ph yeah which one is in agreement with the ph yeah and uh, as you can see it is this one which is in agreement with the ph yeah so in other words we are saying that this is remember we said this one is responsible for the metabolic component while this one is responsible for the respiratory component, yeah? Now, since it is this one which is in the direction or which is agreeing with the pH, yeah? Then our imbalance is metabolic in nature. Since it is agreeing with the pH, then we are saying our imbalance is metabolic in nature. So in other words, it is a metabolic acidosis, yeah? We are saying that it is a metabolic acidosis. So, metabolic, metabolic acidosis, yeah? Now, we want to look at whether it is uh, either compensated partially or, you know, or partially or fully, yeah? Now, having done that, yeah, we, as, 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 as highlighted earlier, um, 
we, we are saying that uh, the, 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 uh, it was alkalosis as far as this one is concerned and acidosis as far as that is concerned, yeah? Now, uh, determine if either carbon dioxide or bicarbonate are abnormal in the opposite direction of the pH, yeah? We have, uh, we have, uh, we have done that already, yeah? Now, when compensation has brought back the pH to be to, to, to normal range, yeah, then we are saying which is said to be you know complete, yeah, complete uh, compensation, yeah. But if it has not brought back the pH to normal range, then it is partial. Is it clear? If the compensation has brought back, maybe one thing that I should mention is that uh, this problem, we said it is metabolic, yeah? It is metabolic. So if the problem is metabolic, we expect the compensation to come from the respiratory. I want to repeat. Since we said the problem is metabolic, we expect the compensation to come from the respiratory components, yeah? So in other words, we are saying that uh, we expect compensation to come from the respiratory component, yeah? Now, if the pH is not between 7.35 and uh, 4.7.45, then the attempt to compensate is not yet complete. And we call this partial compensation or what we call partially compensated, yeah? Now, so that means, going back to our question, you see the pH is not within normal range, yeah? Because the pH, the pH which is within normal range is 7.35 to 7.45, yeah? So the normal range here we said is 7.35 to 7.45. Five, yeah, but look at this pH. It is not within normal range. Yeah, it is not within normal range. So that basically means that um, we, 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 you know, the, the compensation is not complete. Yeah, the compensation is not complete. Yeah, and so therefore we have, um, uh, you know, we have a partial compensation. Yeah we have a partial compensation, yeah? And therefore it is referred to as partially compensated metabolic acidosis, yeah? Why are we saying that it is partial compensation? We are saying that because of two things. One is that the pH is not within normal range, but also we are seeing that the respiratory component is trying to compensate. In other words, the respiratory component is trying to, to compensate for this acidosis by, you know, by becoming more of alkalosis, yeah? So we are saying that we have a partial, partially compensated metabolic acidosis, yeah? So we are saying it is partially partially compensated, partially compensated metabolic acidosis, yeah? So that is basically how we do interpretation. Now, we are going to look at another example, yeah? We are going to look at another example and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and then, uh, you know, we are going to see, yeah? We're going to look at another example, uh, which, is, which is basically this, yeah? So the other example that we can look at is that uh, the pH, yeah? The pH this time, yeah? Is, is uh, 7.238. So the pH this time, we are looking at another example and the pH this time is 
seven point two three eight. Yeah, seven point two three eight. Yeah, is is that? And then the bicarbonate is started two point five. Yeah, the bicarbonate is started two point five. Yeah, and then the carbon dioxide is seventy eight. Yeah. 78. Of course, this is, is the minimums, of, rather millimeters of mercury. This is milli equivalence per liter. And then, uh, of course, the pH is that. Yeah? Now, again, you still go through the same steps. Yeah? We say the first step is you look at what? You look at the pH. Yeah? The first step is that you look at the pH. Yeah? And when we look at the pH, yeah, when we look at the pH, this is the pH that we have, yeah? And remember we said that the pH that you should have in your head or the pH should, that should be the baseline is 7.4, yeah? Your baseline pH is 7.4, 7.4, yeah? Now, where does where does this figure fall does it fall this side or it falls this side yes of course it falls this side so therefore it is said to be acidosis is it clear because it falls because this figure falls this side yeah it is said to be acidosis yeah so in other words we have acid Dosis, yeah, which is our last name. Now, after that, you look at the two values, at the values of, of this and that, yeah? Now, let's first look at that. We are saying that the figure that the machine has given us is this, yeah? But we know the normal ranges are this and that, yeah? This to that, yeah? Now, where does this figure fall here? It falls that side, yeah? It falls that side, yeah? Because it is more than 28, yeah? So that basically means that is what? Alkalosis, yeah? That is alkalosis. So in other words, this figure here is giving us that it is alka alkalosis. So this figure is telling us that this is alkalosis, yeah? On the other hand, this figure here is 78, yeah? And the normal figures, are, the normal values are here. Where does this figure fall? This figure falls beyond 45, yeah? In other words, if it falls beyond 45, then for it, it is telling us that it is acidosis, yeah? So in other words, this figure is telling us that this one is acidosis. So we said that um, of these figures, of these two, you look at one which is in line with the pH. You look at one which is in line with the pH, and it is this one which is in line with the pH. Therefore, our imbalance is respiratory in nature. In other words, it is respiratory acidosis. Is it clear? It is respiratory acidosis, yeah? So we are saying, we are saying that it is respiratory, respiratory acidosis, yeah? So respi, respiratory, Acidosis. Now, again, you want to know whether it is fully compensated or partially compensated. Yeah. Now, what did we say for, for compensation? For compensation, you look at two things. Yeah. And, and also, just to, 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 to bring to your attention, we say that if the imbalance is respiratory in nature, then the metabolic would be the one to compensate. And if the imbalance is metabolic in nature, then the respiratory will be the one to compensate. 
what are we saying? We are saying that, um, so we expect the compensation to come from the metabolic, yeah? So basically we are saying that uh, since we are having uh, this, this, uh, this bicarbonate has actually increased, so in other words, it is trying to compensate, yeah? But it is not fully compensated because this figure does not fall within the, within the, the, the normal range. So in other words, it is partially compensated, yeah? It is partially compensated. So in other words, we are saying it is partially compensated. Partially compensated respiratory acidosis. I hope you have understood that. Please, I want you to, I want you to, to interpret uh, the, 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 those remaining ones that you can see there, yeah? Please try them out. And uh, in case of any questions, please feel free to contact me, yeah? And then I'll give you the answers. Please try them out, yeah? Please try them out. So, um. As we said, it is basically partially compensated respiratory acidosis, yeah? Partially compensated respiratory acidosis. So the others, actually the others, the, the answers are there, yeah? The answers are there. So please uh, try to make sure um, you read them out. Now, what are the causes of respiratory acidosis? What, what brings about uh, too much, uh, you know, carbon dioxide within the, 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 you know, within the body? One is that uh, hypoventilation, yeah? And this hyperventilation can come from uh, things like sedation, trauma, obstruction within the upper airway, things like uh, you know pulmonary edema, pneumonia, COPD, among and, and weak muscles. Yeah. Now, um, what is the physiological response to respiratory acidosis? What actually happens is that uh, um, the signs that someone has headache, someone has restlessness, weak. Uh, tremor, you know, cyanosis, you know, pala, all these are respiratory, uh, these are, all these are physiologic responses to, to respiratory acidosis, yeah? Now, uh, how do we care of a patient with respiratory acidosis? One is that uh, they need oxygen, yeah? Uh, you need to ventilate them, and then, uh, you know, coughing, yeah? Or suctioning to clear the airway, very, very important, yeah? And then uh, medication for bronchial, you know, dilatation, yeah? And then now, uh, what are the causes of uh, respiratory alkalosis? Basically, hyperventilation, yeah? Uh, you've seen people who, you know, you know, they breathe very, very fast because of anxiety or even pain, yeah? They will end up into respiratory alkalosis, yeah? And uh, what are the responses? Things like anxiety, uh, hyperventilation, they feel dizzy, and then lightheaded, yeah? Basically, all these, yeah? Now, how do we care for these? One reduce the anxiety, reduce the pain, and usually they are given uh, they are given a bag to breathe in. Yeah, you you give them a bag. Yeah, where they they can breathe in. Yeah, so that uh, they can they basically breathe in the the expired carbon dioxide. Yeah, so it it helps. Yeah, it helps them. Metabolic acidosis. What are the causes? You know. Um, occurs uh, from excreting too much bicarbonate, yeah? So in other words, uh, if too much bicarbonate goes, then you'll end up with metabolic acidosis, yeah? Or retaining too much uh, carbon dioxide, no, no, too much hydrogen ions, yeah? So uh, conditions like DKA, uh, renal disease, uh, severe infection, diarrhea, overdose of medications, all these can lead to metabolic acidosis, yeah? And then the physiologic responses are things like increased rate and depth of respirations, uh, you know, uh, uh, hyperkalemia, uh, lethargy, stupor, uh, flushed skin, and uh, hypotension. Yeah, all these can be, uh, you know, um, signs and symptoms of metabolic uh, acidosis. Yeah. Um, how do we usually care for these patients? We usually give them, um, you know, you usually give bicarbonate in form of uh, sodium, you know, sodium uh, bicarbonate, yeah? And it's, however, it's given sparingly and only when the pH is less than, you know, 7.1. In other words, you want to, to bring it up, 
yeah, to normal range. Yeah? So uh, precipitated cell hypokalemia can, can result uh, if, uh, if, if, if it's not given uh, cautiously. Yeah? And uh, then um, um, basically other things like uh, sodium of fluid volume overload and then increased, uh, you know, as, as, uh, uh, serum osmolarity. So if you don't give it uh, cautiously, then it has such potential complications that you need to, to look into, yeah? Then uh, insulin is usually given, uh, uh, insulin together with, um, with uh, glucose, these are usually given to, 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 to uh, as far as uh, the problem of, uh, uh, meta of uh, 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 metabolic acidosis is, uh, is, is basically concerned. Then it's important to monitor the cardiac, uh, the cardiac function and the respiratory status, and also support these patients on a monitor or, or, or on, uh, on a ventilator. Metabolic alkalosis, uh, what, what basically causes it uh, is that uh, any disorder that brings about uh, loss of natural acids, yeah? Like maybe gastric suctioning, because when you suction, you get rid of the HCL in the body, yeah? And then uh, overdose of antiacids, yeah? Uh, things like Cushing syndrome, we shall look at this hyper, uh, hypoaldosteronism and then hypokalemia. All these can lead to metabolic uh, acidosis, yeah? How does, how do we know this? Uh, um, basically, the respiratory compensator, compensator decreases the respiratory rate and depth. In, so in other words, these people um, have a decrease in rate and depth of, uh, because of the respiratory compensation mechanism, yeah? Um, and then uh, renal system will retain the hydrogen and excrete more of the bicarbonate. Then potassium will be forced, you know, out of the cells, yeah? Rather, will be forced into the cell, yeah? From the, you know, from the extracellular space. And then uh, you, you might have uh, other multiple electrolyte imbalances. Uh, what, 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 what does it result in? It results into muscle twitching, things like confusion, changes in the ECG, nausea and vomiting, yeah? And then um, how do we care for such patients? Of course, we monitor the level of electrolytes. Remember, we talked about potassium, yeah? We do cardiac monitoring, we manage nausea and vomiting. We, we, if, if need be, stop anti-acid administration and then treat all the electrolyte imbalances, yeah? Now, this is basically how we manage uh, such patients, yeah? So, to, so that has been uh, the, the, you know, the, the concept of acid-base uh, balance and imbalances in the body. I hope you have understood, and please make sure that uh, in case you have any questions, don't hesitate to, to contact me for more details. Other than that, um, please, uh, Make sure you access uh, you access this video so that you're able to you know to to to, to learn with us. Please stay home and stay safe.